Molas, colorful fabric panels made by the Kuna women of Panama, are used for decorative purposes on clothing or furniture or as a wall hanging. The art of making molas consists of developing designs on pieces of different colored fabric laid on top of each other, cutting the desired pattern, then expertly stitching the edges to reveal the contrasting colors underneath. The Kuna women use this technique to make front and back panels on their traditional dress, which are among the most intricate and colorful dresses worn by Native women in the Americas. In art class, we will be creating our molas using construction paper. We will use at least four different colors of construction paper and will replicate the look of fabric molas made in Panama. This mola here of the dog is inspired by my own pet, Finnegan. He's a Westie. The Kuna are inspired by the animals and plants that they see around them in their everyday lives. All of these examples you're seeing are made out of construction paper. Glue and scissors were the only other tools needed in the process. The first thing we will do to make our mola is create a stencil of our subject. The subject of your mola should be the animal of your choice. I'm going to highly recommend that you sketch out different animals to see which one you want to pick. You can sketch your animals either in your sketchbook or on pieces of computer paper. When you begin drawing, start by drawing the basic shapes first. I'm starting with an oval for the body, an oval for the head, and then I began kind of with a line for the tail of my squirrel. Try to draw your animals at least as big as your hand. Each animal drawing that you do is a potential stencil for your MOLA project. That means if you draw it really well one time and it's as big as your hand and you're really happy with it, then that is what you can use for your MOLA assignment. To have plenty of practice though, I'm going to ask that you create four animal drawings before choosing the one to cut out for your stencil. See how by starting with these basic forms, I could just add and adapt those forms to create my squirrel? So for my next example, I'm taking inspiration from my own surroundings and I'm making a blue heron because there's one I see all the time that lives in the lake behind my house. While I'm trying to describe what this animal looks like, I'm not getting too detailed. I know I'm going to have to cut this out to make it into a stencil. When I cut, I'm very careful not to cut off things like the legs or the beak. I cut around the lines, not on top of them. If anything, make things like the legs a little bit thicker than you naturally wanted them to be. Just take your time and focus on what you're doing. You wouldn't want to cut off a leg or an ear or a tail now, would you? After creating your stencil, you will need colored paper. Choose four different colors of paper, place your stencil on top of the one that you want your animal to be, and trace around your stencil. If you have a really hard time holding your stencil down, you could always use one piece of masking tape made into a little tape donut. I would just place that tape just in the center of your animal and just stick it down to your paper. When you finish tracing your stencil, you will then cut it out on the line. Cut carefully. This is now when it counts. Save the large scraps. You're also going to be using those scraps later, so just set them aside. The small scraps, anything smaller than an inch, definitely throw those ones away. You do not need to save those little guys. Now you can see I have a blue heron. I placed my blue heron on the different colors of paper and I chose the one that I thought contrasted the most. For blue, the yellow contrasted more than the green or the red. Okay, so I turned my blue heron over, I placed some dots of glue on the back and then I glue it down to my yellow paper. Now I lightly draw in pencil around my blue heron, but this time I'm leaving a gap. The gap is about as wide as a pencil. As soon as I'm done drawing, I cut on that line. I save my large scraps again. You can save your scraps in your sketchbook or in your red folder. As you're doing this, a colorful halo or outline should appear around your animal. In my case, it's yellow. That outline or halo should be the same size or width throughout the line around the entire animal.
Now you're basically going to repeat the steps you just took. Glue the bird down to a new color of contrasting paper. Outline it, again, leaving an extra space about the width of a pencil. Cut on that line. And then glue it down to your last color of paper, saving your scraps once more. So if you haven't figured it out yet, we're going to use our scraps for decorating. Here is my almost finished blue heron mola. You can see all the decorations I've added into the background and inside of the blue heron. I first drew the shapes I wanted to cut out on the red scraps of paper. I just made simple oval-like shapes, one for the head and then three for the body to kind of resemble the wings. Once I got them the size and shape I wanted them, I just set them down. I didn't glue yet. And I moved on to my next color. I wanted to add in some yellow and do some layering. So you can see I put some, a yellow oval on top of the red for the eye, and then I did little yellow lines for the beak. I glue them after I'm certain that I like their placement. When using glue, just a few little dots of glue is plenty. Use a paper towel to wipe off any excess glue. Now I'm gonna do something really different in the background. I'm going to draw some shapes from the edge of the paper inward that I can actually cut out of the background paper. So I'm going to be cutting on the line. See how I'm removing pieces from that green piece of background paper? And eventually I'll be adding another color of paper underneath it. I'm saving these scraps too because I might want to use them someplace else. When everything is cut out, I then need to decide which color of paper will look best, in my opinion, in the background to show through those holes. Once I've chosen one, I put glue on the back of my mola and then glue that down to the new color of paper. You'll see some glue coming through the holes. Just use a paper towel and wipe that off. You can repeat this process and cut out more places from your background paper and add additional colors behind it too. You don't always have to use a full sheet of paper. Sometimes that could be a big waste. Notice how through all of this decorating, I'm using the same four colors that I originally chose. The blues, the red, the yellow, and the green. I'm also balancing the shapes that I'm gluing down. Balance and unity are two important principles of design that you see in most molas. Please write your name on the back of your mola each class and then place it on the drying rack so that the glue can dry. You will have approximately three classes to complete your mola.